po mga kapatid sa ating lesson dito po sa F's of Salvation. And I, I, I'll just stand po mga kapatid para po para po makabuelo tayo just in case kung ano yung mga mapag-usapan natin ngayong umaga and so that we could write things na kailangang isulat. And um, so last week, we, we dealt on this subject on the F's of Salvation and uh, I gave a, a lengthy in, um, introduction about it about the topic that about that salvation is the work of God for us rather than the work of men amen for God it's the work of God for men rather than the work of men for God and and by virtue of the finished work of Christ for salvation and these precious truths right now are uh, made available for all and what are those because of that Finish work, nagkaroon ng available reconciliation, forgiveness, redemption, justification, sanctification, propitiation, even righteousness of God is made available. And of course, we dealt on that. And uh, now, we, we started, we talked about also on that first F. And the first F is the fact of salvation. And as we dealt on that fact of salvation, that the fact of our salvation is that what we need, uh, that all the work that needs to be done, okay, listen, the fact of our salvation is all the work that needs to be done for the sinner salvation, okay, Christ did it, amen, and is doing, and still doing, God is still in the business of saving, amen, together with the Father, and with the Holy Ghost. And Christ's work was and is a perfect and all-sufficient redemptive work. And that is wholly acceptable to God. Okay? That is wholly acceptable to God. And it was set forth to be propitiation. So, I'm trying to make a quick review of what we have discussed last time. So the fact of salvation is contained where? In the gospel. It is contained in the gospel. Okay? It is contained in the gospel. That's where we can find the fact of salvation. When I say contained in the gospel, I mean the gospel of the grace of God. Because marami pong gospel sa Bible and pwede din po ikaw ay mahulog sa another gospel, okay, na hindi pinapangaral ni Paul and also a perverted gospel. Meron din pong gospel sa ibang panahon like gospel of the kingdom, okay, before the age of grace, there was a gospel of the kingdom. Meron din, meron din gospel nandito sa even sa early acts na exclusively para sa mga hudyo and that is called the gospel of the circumcision. Amen. By the way, the gospel of the kingdom, that is the gospel, that is the good news of the kingdom, that it has nothing to do with the death, with the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Amen. And there is also a gospel in the tribulation period, and they call it, at least there, uh, there's that gospel of the kingdom, again, that would be uh, resumed in preaching doon sa tribulation period, at meron ding everlasting gospel. So, that's why may sinabi ang Bible na another gospel sa panahon po natin. So, when I say the gospel of the grace of God, Amen, the heart of the gospel of the grace of God is what Christ fully accomplished. That is the good news of what Christ had fully accomplished to please the Father by virtue of His death, of His shed blood, of His burial, and of His resurrection. And that is the fact of salvation that is contained in the gospel. It is found in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. And the gospel is the word of truth according to Ephesians 1.13. The Bible says, In whom ye trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So this gospel is the word of truth. That is the gospel of our salvation in whom also after that ye believe, then ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. 
At sabi pa ng Biblia po mga kapatid in 1 Thessalonians 1.5 that this gospel came unto us not in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. So this gospel brought what? It came from the Word. Amen. Through the Word of God. And also, it has power. And alongside with that is in the Holy Ghost. And it brought also assurance. So, amen. Nobody should assure you, but this gospel that the sinner should believe, amen, is already an assurance of their salvation. Amen. So, and according to Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation. Now, God exercises power in saving men when that person will believe the gospel because the gospel is the power of God, amen, in saving men. But it was preconditioned on one thing, and that is to everyone that believe it. To everyone that believe it. And we also learn that in Romans 1.17 that the gospel contains the righteousness of God. The gospel contains the righteousness of God. So for therein, the Bible says, is the righteousness of God revealed. So the gospel revealed the righteousness of God. That once a believer okay, would trust amen, Christ and what he did in the gospel, amen, for his salvation to be sufficient for him. Amen. And he will instantly be imputed the righteousness of God. He will receive the righteousness of God in an instant, po mga kapatid. And because the gospel of Christ contains the righteousness of God and it reveals the righteousness of God. So this is the fact. When we say the fact, it is the truth. Mga kabated. And when we talk about the truth po mga kabated, and when we talk about the truth or fact, it is discovered, it is not invented. Amen. It is discovered and it is not invented. So, wala pong pwedeng gagawa ng ibang ibanghelyo or ibang kaligtasan. When we talk, wala ibang gagawa ng ibang fact. Hindi pwede nating iimbento itong fact of salvation or truth of salvation po mga kabated. Because this is only found in the Word of God and this is not invented. Kaya po ang isang salvation po na apart from what the Bible declares is not the, the truth about salvation and that's another way of salvation and that is that salvation is not sanctioned by God. It is not commanded by God. But when you talk about a fact, amen, it is discovered, amen, it, it is not invented. So, when we talk about the fact of salvation, uh, it, it is God's ano po, mga kabated, uh, word and it, no, nobody have, have designed this and invented this or made this up po mga kabated. Because truth is discovered, not invented. And when, I, when we talk about the truth also, it is transcultural. When I say transcultural, amen, this truth is still truth. This fact is still fact with regards to culture, with regards to races, with regards to any country or any nation. Amen. Truth is the same truth even if it cross borders. Amen. The truth that we have known and we have believed in the Philippines is the same truth in the United States and in China in all the rest of the world. Amen. It is transcultural regardless of, so our salvation is this because this is our culture and, and it differs to yours. No, that's not that. This truth is transcultural. And the truth of the gospel is unchanging. Even our belief about it changed. Okay? Even our belief about the truth of the gospel changed. So it is, this is unchanging. Even if everyone does not believe it, Amen. Even if you change your belief about that, truth is truth. Amen. The truth of the gospel, this is unchanging. Amen. Even if our belief will change, it would remain truth. And also, belief cannot change a fact no matter how sincerely they are held. 
even if you believe on something, amen, it could not change a fact. It would not change the truth, regardless of how sincere you believe. But truth is truth. Fact is fact. Then if you are sincere, believing a lie, and believing a wrong, then therefore you can be sincerely wrong. Amen. You are sincerely believing a lie. But it could never make a lie the truth because you are sincere about that, because you believe about that. So there's nothing that could change the fact. Whether sincerity, whether devotion, it would not change the fact regardless of what you hold dearly. Fact is fact po mga kapatid. Even sabihin mo, umiiyak naman ako nung ako ay nasave at ako ay nung tinanggap ko ang Panginoon at pinapapasok ko sa aking puso, I must be saved dahil ako ay naging emotional, dahil ako ay, ako ay talagang sinsiro sa pagpanalangin ko, o pagsunod ko sa panalangin, therefore I must be saved. You may convince yourself you are saved, but fact of salvation is fact of salvation. Nobody could change that. Your sincerity by no means, po mga kapatid, could alter not an inch, not a bit of the truth. Amen. So, we could not force the issue. And truth of the gospel is not affected by the attitude of the one professing it. The truth of the gospel is not affected or the fact of the gospel is not affected by the one or by the attitude of the one professing it. What do I mean by that? Even if yung nag-preach ng Ibanghelyo, as long as he faithfully preached the fact of salvation or the truth of salvation, regardless whether he is faithful or not, amen, truth is truth, regardless who preach it, whether those who, because may mga taong, Sa Philippians chapter number, look at Philippians chapter number 2, may mga tao po na nag, nagpipreach po mga kapatid ay sa chapter number 1 pala. And sabi ni Apostle Paul in verse number 15, sabi dito, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add to my affliction, to, to add affliction to my bonds, and but the other of love, knowing that I am set forth for the defense of the gospel. The truth of the gospel would not change. Amen. Whether you pre I preach it in pretense, whether you preach it in envy, you, whether you preach it in, 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 ano po, in carnality, whether you preach it in, in, ano po, mga kapatid, in contention, or whatever your attitude, or in goodwill, or in love, whatever your attitude may be in, in preaching and professing the truth, truth is not affected. The truth of the gospel is not affected. Some people would just say, Oh, I could not believe what you preach because look at your attitude, look at your look at the way you live, look at you I could not believe the Bible because you know your your life is not consistent with that. Sabi ni Mahatma Gandhi, sabi niya, sabi niya, umiyak siya at sinabi niya, sinisi niya ang mga Kristiyano at ang sabi niya, if it's not because of the Christian, I should be a Christian. If not because of the Christian, I should be a Christian. Mga kapatid, you could say whatever you want to say, Mahatma Gandhi, but you are in hell right now if you have not trusted Christ. You may blame all you want, you may blame all the day, but your blame game would never change, would never change the fact of the Word of God, the fact of the Gospel, the fact of salvation would never change anything. You go ahead, some people right now, they went to hell because they're good at blaming others. Oh, I haven't believed this uh, brother and this, this person, this Christian, so and so, because his life is not as good as what I see, as not good as what I expected. You go ahead, do that, but the truth would never change. Your sincerity would never change the truth or the fact of salvation and your attitude would never or the attitude of those who preach it or those who professed it amen would not change also the the fact of the gospel yes it is true that sometimes please listen 
it is true that sometimes our attitude will serve as a stumbling block. Amen. Yes, it is true that sometimes our our indifferent attitude would hinder, amen, some people to trust Christ. But never did it change. Amen. The fact. Fact is fact. It is absolute. And when you talk about the truth of the gospel, they're all absolute. And there is certainty. There is an assurance about that. Therefore, you can know it. You can hold it. Amen. That's why these things have I written unto you that ye believe in the name of the Son of God that ye may know. Amen. Because it's an absolute truth. You can be certain about that. You can be sure about that. You can be guaranteed about that. Amen. You can be assured about that. Because it's absolute truth. The truth of the gospel, the fact of your salvation, amen, is an absolute truth. Amen. Praise God for that. And you have to realize that. And truth, the fact of the gospel is also that is which correspond to its referent. So when the Bible says, for I, be, uh, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. To everyone that believe it. So that is to say, truth is what it says it is. It is what it says. It is what it is. When it says it can save, then it is what it is. Amen. It corresponds to its referent. If it's referring and if it provides promises and provides some guaranteed results, then it is what it is. Amen. So what can you do about the truth? Amen. The Bible says you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So marami pong, nag, marami pong nag-deviate sa fact of salvation. And who cares about some people? Ito po kasi po mga kapatid, eh, may, may mga tao kasi na tinatawag po natin na, na there are two ano po mga kapatid, there are two, at least three main or three school of thoughts when it comes to the truth. Okay, number one is, of course, our belief is absolute. Truth is absolute. Amen. So, meron tayong, uh, we believe on that camp that when it comes to the truth, it is absolute and there should be one objective source and that's the Word of God. Amen. The source of the truth must be God, must be His Word. Amen. Must be Christ and it must be the Spirit. It should not be outside from them. And we believe that it is absolute. There are a group of people who also believe that truth is relative. Amen. That is the relativism. The group, the theory of relativism po mga kapatid. I'm not looking at Einstein theory of relativism but their theory about the truth is relative. That is to say, they're saying that the truth is dependian sa tao, dependian sa religion, dependian sa culture, dependian sa practice, dependian sa conviction. Para sinasabi na, may truth sa Muslim, may truth din sa ano, sa sa Buddhist, may truth din sa 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 lahat ng religion. Kaya wag mong i-discriminate, may truth din si Kibuloy, may truth din sila lahat, lahat, lahat. So depende 'yon kung sino nagsasabi. According to them, is kung yun ang tingin niya, truth, din yun ang truth para sa kanya. So that's not the way po mga kabatid. Whether you say it is truth, you convince yourself it is truth, it would make, it would not make a lie the truth because you say it is truth. It is not relative. It is not subjectivism. It is not subject to your emotion. It is not subject to your to your belief. It is not subject to your religion. It is not subject to your culture. It is not subject to what you think the truth is. Amen. It's not subjectivism. It is not relativism. It is not subjectivism. And at last, it is not pragmatism. Sometimes people will base the truth when I say pragmatism po mga kapatid, 
they base the truth on the result, on the outcome. So my, that's why there are people who are what we call result-oriented people. And they say, when, when you talk about pragmatics people, their philosophy is this, anything that works is truth. Anything that effective is truth. And they will base on that po mga kapatid. Mga kapatid, sometimes, amen, a lie and most of the time, in our time and age, lies are the most effective approach. Amen. Sometimes po mga kapatid, amen, evil ways are the most effective approach in our time and age. And when you base the truth on the result or on the outcome po mga kapatid, now that's the doom of it. Amen. But truth is truth. Whether it works to other or it didn't. Truth is truth. Amen. Some people would say, we must be in the truth. Because look at our church. Look at that fruit. They're result-oriented. Look, the, look at the souls. There are thousands. There are millions. And if you say we're a lie, then why there are people who are following us? So th those are pragmatics people, pragmatic people. They, they, they look at, they base the truth, the fact on the results and on the effect. Uh, one time I have, I, I have a discussion with one pastor with regards to the simplicity of the gospel and with regards to the, to the response to the gospel that I say it should be believing. It should be by grace through faith alone on that all-sufficient cross work of Christ. and But this fellow over here insisted that no, believing is not enough. You need to pray. And specifically, you need to pray the sinner's prayer. And, and of course, I argue with that and I gave him scriptures, but he argued also back to me. And his argument was never the word of God, but his argument is on the results of the men of God whom he considered as heroes or their his mentor. And he said to me, I don't, I, I don't have to tell you the name of the pastor that he mentioned. He said, don't tell me this pastor over here has a 7,000 in attendance and he is more than 30 years in the ministry. And do you mean to tell me that his soul winning method is wrong because we believe the same that there is the necessity of prayer? Do you mean to tell me that, that those souls, they're also wrong? And look at the number of that. Look at the number of years that he have served the Lord. He's been faithful and he's been that. And then, then he told me, then what have you proven? Now show me what have you proven. If you say you are in the truth, if you say what you're saying is the truth, then what have you proven? So yun ang problema po nila po mga kapatid. Sabihin, tingnan mo, anong, anong, anong nagawa mo? Tingnan mo sila, anong nagagawa? Tapos sabihin mo, mali sila. Mga kapatid, that's very sad. That person, his final authority is not the referent. It's not the source. It's not the word of God. His final authority is those men. Mga kapatid, truth is not based on numbers. If it's based on numbers and it based, if it's based on desirable results, therefore, the cults could be considered as truth. Therefore, those millions and billions of Chinese who worship mga kapatid on Buddhism could be considered that they are in the truth because you consider that. And therefore, Kibuloy could be truer than you. Therefore, Manalo could be truer than you. Therefore, the Mormons could be truer than you. Therefore, the Catholics could be truer than you. Therefore, the Pope could be truer than you or anybody if that is the case po mga kapatid. Because I mean, let me tell you this, they are even more effective than you. Amen. They have win a lot of souls than you when it comes to their doctrine. But thank goodness, truth is not based on that. But the truth is, this is the truth. Amen. It was the majority who rejected the truth. It was the majority who are against the truth. 
It was the majority who crucified the Lord. It was the majority who denied the word of God. It doesn't mean it is popular that it is already right. But the, uh, oftentimes, what's popular is not right, and what is right is not popular. And that's just the thing na atin pong tatanggapin po mga kapatid. And we could not just do that and say, Oh, your soul winning method must be wrong because ilan lang kayo doon. Ilan lang kayo. I believe this. When it comes to the truth, narrow is the way. When it comes to the lie, wide is the gate. Broad is the gate. At yun lang po ang katotohanan. And that's very sad. Therefore, when it comes to the truth, it is not relativism, it is not subjectivism, and it is not, amen, pragmatism. But it is absolute. It is absolute. I'm, tol I'm t telling you po mga kapatid, oftentimes, majorities are wrong. Oftentimes, the majority would reject the truth. Amen. And another thing is, also, being few is not also the basis of truth. Are you listening? It is not also the basis of truth because truth is truth. Whether more people who will stand for it or nobody will stand for it, truth is truth. And that's the fact ng ating kaligtasan. And uh, wag nating ano po mga kapatid, pag sinabi ng Bible, what determines the truth now is the Bible. It is the word of truth. It should be the word of God. And what the Bible says, it must be truth. Amen. It must be truth. And how do you know that you have the fact of salvation if if your salvation is based on the word of God? And rightly divided. Amen. Rightly divided. But if it's not, I'm sorry. You may imagine things, you may do things, you may think a lot of things, but that doesn't qualify because it, at all. Because it is God and the Word of God that determines what the truth is. Are you listening? Let me say that it is God and His Word that determines what the truth is. Amen. And when it comes to the gospel, if the fact of the gospel is contained in, if the fact of salvation is the, contained in the gospel, then the gospel must be communicated. The gospel must be communicated through preaching. Therefore, what you see in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1, Amen. Sabi niya, Brethren, I declared unto you the gospel which I have which I also received, which I preach unto you, which I also received. I declared unto you the gospel which I preach unto you. So it must be preached. In Romans chapter number 10, 14, How shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? It must be preached. And in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 21, that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching, amen, to save them that believe. So this truth must be communicated so that this truth could be available to the ears and to the hearts of those sinners, of those unbelievers. And the gospel must be heard. That's why it has to be communicated through preaching because it must be heard. And the Bible says in Ephesians 1.13, In whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You, heard, you should hear the gospel of your salvation. Amen. In whom also after that you believed. So that then you can respond. So first, in this, the fact of salvation is the gospel. Therefore, 
It should be, this is determined by God. This is determined by God. Not determined by men, not determined by culture. It's not determined by the feelings of people. Not determined, amen, by the, by the, by the thinking of people or not determined by religion. But it is determined by God and His Word. And we have to take note on that. So it must be heard. It must be communicated. It must be communicated through preaching. Amen. It must be communicated through preaching. Now, the next thing that you see, that's the fact. Fact is fact. So what do you do? If you want to be in the truth, po mga kapatid, if you want to be in the truth, is corresponds to its referent. You should correspond to what the truth says. If you want to be in the truth, then agree to what the truth says. If you want to be in the truth, then embrace what the truth says. If you want to be in the truth, therefore repent from what you think is right, then put it away, amen, repudiate it, and abandon it, then start to cling on the truth alone because there could be no truth. Truth must be absolute. Truth must be one. There could be no two truths at the same time. And there could be no two source. There should be one. It must be God through His Word. Amen. So you have to respond to it and correspond to it and agree. You should be agreeable to it. And not, again, we can do nothing against the truth and sabi ng Bible, but for the truth. Amen. So with that, we'll go now to the next F, which is the faith of salvation. So this is now the corresponding, amen, um, response of a man who, whom the truth communicated to him and the response to the truth is what? Is faith or belief. And the truth about our salvation is by grace are ye saved. By grace are ye saved. And how would it be well, how would it be received? Amen. To its recipient is through faith. Amen. Through faith. So, that is the corresponding ano po, response to the truth. Is It has to be believed. It has to be embraced. And this is now the, the faith of salvation which is corresponding to the fact of salvation. So the basis now of the faith of salvation is should be on the fact. That is the foundation po mga kapatid. So to say po mga kapatid, if this is, if this is the cross, amen, the object of that faith, amen, must be on the, this is the fact. So it must be on the fact of what Christ had done for you. Amen. So, hindi, you could not have faith without any basis at all. You could not have some sort of belief without any basis at all. Or your the basis of your faith is something else other than the fact. If the basis of your faith is not on the fact, mga kapatid, Amen. You will never be in the truth. You will always be in living in lies. Amen. Then when it comes to our salvation, I don't care, amen, how much you believe God and about something and about other thing if it is not based on what God determined what fact of salvation is or truth about salvation is. Amen. You will always be lost. Because fact is an intangible thing. 
There is not a physical thing that you need to hold. And to, to agree to the fact is to believe the fact. Are you listening? To agree to the fact is to believe the fact. That's why what you see in the Bible is the response, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And in, in Romans chapter number 4, verse 5, that by believing on the justifier, the sinner's faith is counted for righteousness. That is precondition. And this is good news. That na makikita po natin that the precondition for, for to receive the fact or to have the fact is faith. Amen. So I, I talk about that and faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is hearing on the fact. And the only right response to the truth of the gospel is faith or believing. That's why it effectually worketh in you that believe. When I gave you a fact, listen, when I gave you a fact, and I, th this was my classic example, and I'll say this again over and over. Who cares about that? But this is a, 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 a declaration of fact. And let me give you an example of fact, a declaration of fact. That President Roa, uh, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, is the 16th president of the Republic of the Philippines by virtue of rights and evidence. Amen. In the Republic of the Philippines, he is declared as the 16th president of the Republic of the Philippines by virtue of the constitutional rights. Amen. He is declared to be the 16th president of the Republic of the Philippines. That's a fact. So, what should be what should be the attitude of those who heard the fact? Amen. There is no other option when it comes to the fact, when it is a proven fact. Should you deny it? Should you say, no, I can't accept it? No, I should fight for it. I should resist for it. But when you prove that it's a fact, there is no other option but what? But should acknowledge the fact. Acknowledge the truth. Acknowledge the truth. Amen. So, how do you acknowledge the truth? By letting your mind and heart agree to its referent. Agree to it. That is by... You should be agreeable to it by not fighting. And how do you agree with it? You have to, you, your mind and your heart should adjust to the fact. And how do you, and what is the thing, what is the thing that a man, a man, should do to correspond to the fact? And that is what we call believe. And in the Bible term, that is faith. Amen. And mangyari, ang problema po mga kapatid is ganito. Pagdating sa kaligtasan, pagdating sa kaligtasan, they could articulate the fact. They could say that the fact of salvation is what Christ did, had done. That death, burial, and resurrection. That was the fact that He already did all that needed to be done. And he accomplished it. People sometimes are agreeable to the fact. But their response to the fact is wrong. And they respond to the fact not based on the response that was determined by the word of God. They responded to the fact in other ways rather than what was laid and determined by the Word of God. They use man-made scheme or man-made practice to respond to the fact. Then the fact did not effectually work in them. 
Because the fact would only effectually work in you, the truth would only effectually work in you that belief. It could not effectually work in you to save us. It could not effectually work in us to secure us or to assure us. But it become a powerless because we responded otherwise than what the Bible plainly stated. So we hold on and trusted on the man-made responses rather than on what God says and how a man should respond, how a sinner should respond, which is faith. Amen. So, because of their ideology, because they have a different concept. Now, because they look at a fact as a tangible thing. Now, this is always the fault and where apostasy crept in. And this is where the devil has been successful in doing this. I illustrated this in many churches and in many places that I've been. This is a Bible, right? And this is a tangible thing. When I say a tangible thing, I can hold this. You can hold this with your mind, uh, with your hand. It's a physical thing. Tama po? It's a physical thing. Now, when I gave you a physical book, when I gave you, what will you do? Of course, you will receive it. Amen. You will receive the book. Tama po? Kung bibigyan kita, you have two options. Either you, you will receive it, or you will not receive it. So, of course, by receiving it, because this is given to you physically, you have also to receive it with your physical hands. Of course, it would, it would not be in you unless you would take that in a physical hand because this is a tangible thing. You have to touch it. You have to get it. Amen. I give it to you. You don't have to pay it. Then get it. Tama. But the problem with that analogy is this. When it comes to salvation, that's how also they should understand salvation. The fact of salvation is it is a gift. It is grace and it is a gift. It is free. That's a fact. Tama po ba? That's a fact. Now, ang problema ng mga tao na ito to defend their soul winning errors and their preaching errors of the gospel is this. Kailangan mong tanggapin ang regalo. Truth. Tama. Pero the way they receive the gift is a man-made doctrine. Because they are thinking that the gift is a tangible thing. Therefore, they, they receive it in a, in a physical way by the flesh. Paano ko tatanggapin? So, that's why, sabi nila, you need to pray. You need to pray for acceptance. Na tinatanggap ko, Lord, ang regalo na yung binibigay sa akin. So, in a form of parang nagbigay ka ng physical thing. Are you listening? Pero, when it comes to the gospel, when it comes to the fact of salvation and the gospel, it is a message. It is not a tangible thing. It is a truth. Are you listening? It is the truth. And how will you receive the truth? How will you re receive the truth? Accommodate the truth. Just like what I have told you, I told you a fact and President Duterte is declared to be the President of the Republic of the Philippines how do you accept or receive the fact do you still say tinatanggap ko na si Presidente Duterte ay ang Presidente na ngayon ng Republic of the Philippines pinapapasok ko siya sa aking puso at naniniwala na ako na siya do you have to do that? Do you have to exercise some sort of practice or some sort of mystical uh, way para makuha mo yung or para matanggap mo siyang truth? Because fact is fact. And when you hear the fact, should mind should your mind should agree to it. 
your heart should agree to it. Your mind should believe. Your heart should believe. And when you do believe what was said, when you are persuaded and when you, uh, you are agreeable by believing of what was declared and what was said, you're in fact receiving the what was said. You're in fact uh, receiving the, the truth of what was said. Because it is intangible. A message should only be agreed in the mind and in the heart. And that's what we call believe when you are persuaded. That's faith. That, that what was the referent is talking about is true. And you correspond to the referent that it is what it is. And when it comes to the gospel, when you heard about the fact of the gospel, the fact of what Christ had done, the fact about what Christ had accomplished, the fact about His death, the fact about His blood, the fact about His burial and resurrection, the fact about the sufficiency of what Christ had done, the fact about, mga kapatid, what, can, what it can do to your soul, once you heard about that po, mga kapatid, there is no need of that sinner's prayer or repeat after me prayer in response so that you could have the that, that, that message or the salvation for you, but it is just a message of truth, the good news of your salvation, that what you need is to reckon in your mind, reckon in your heart, and agree and be persuaded to what was presented as the fact, and take it as it is. Amen. And by virtue of doing that, you already also receive the truth. And that is faith. And what happened, what happened to these soul winning schemes today is it clouded at, and hindered what exactly God required for a sinner to be saved. It is now being confused from what Christ did now to what they did. At yun ang danger. Yun ang problema. Kasi, good news nga eh. Wala akong nakakita ng good news na nagre-repeat after me pa na nagpi-pledge ka, tinatanggap ko, tinatanggap ko, ang balita, ang balita, nagpi-pledge ka pa. Pag sinabihan ka, kung ano yung sinasabi, sa fact na yun, or sa truth na yun, your heart's attitude must correspond to its referent that it is what it is. That's why in the Bible, in the Bible, na makikita mo, look at in Ephesians 1.13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, then what happened? Then ye were what? Sealed. What is the response? After that, when ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, after that, in whom also after that what? Ye believed. Then you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. You know, what was, the, what was the response to the gospel? Believe it. By believing it, you're actually receiving it. You're, but you're not receiving it as a tangible thing na papasukin kita sa aking puso na meron ka pang orasyon na sasabihin. 
Ano? There is your words has no power. Your your prayers has no power. And it could not undo the fact, it could not change the the fact of the condition of how to be saved. It could not change at all. You can go on ahead with your sincerity. Amen. You can go on ahead with with such humility. But if you don't agree to what was determined by the Word of God as the condition on how should I realize the fact, is you could you could go wrong all the way. In Romans 3.22, it says here, Even the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. And in Romans chapter number 10, verse number 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. In Romans chapter number 10, verse 10, the Bible says, For with Christ, uh, for with the heart man believeth. Where, where is man believing? Not in the mouth. You don't believe in the mouth. But you believe in the heart. And in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 21, it pleased God by the foolish nestle preaching to save them, to save them that believe. And the Bible says, To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. It is that way po mga kapatid. Amen. Now, I'd like, I'd like you to, to look at, to consider these verses first before we go further. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, then we have also, uh, ano po mga kapatid? We have 1 Corinthians 15, then we have um, Ephesians chapter number, okay, 1, 13. Okay, next we have also po mga kapatid, another verse that I'd like to go. Romans chapter number 10, 14. I'd like you to, to put in mind the order of salvation, how faith and fact should go together, and fact must be first before faith. So the order is always been this po mga kapatid. There must be, kung ito yung train po mga kapatid, so mamaya na na ating... Kung ito yung train, okay. So, ang hihila dapat is fact must be the first, then faith. Hindi pwedeng mauna, ha? Hindi pwedeng mauna. Or mabaliktad po mga kabatid. It should be that way. Hindi pwedeng mabaliktad. Now, I'd like you to look at its one. In 1 Corinthians 15, you will see the word, okay, preaching. You see preaching in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Then you see hearing. Then you see believing or receiving. Ano pa nakikita mo dyan sa 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4? And you will see, mga kapatid, the result of that preaching, hearing, believing, then the result of that, save. Okay? Look at the outcome po, mga kapatid. I'd like you to see this. Okay, ayusin lang natin. Okay. Now, in Ephesians chapter number 1, in Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 13, In whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth. So, you, the, of course, obviously, we can presume that there was preaching because you heard it. Eh. There was preaching, then there was hearing. 
Amen. The preaching of what? The fact. The preaching of the gospel. Then there was what? Be believing or trusting. Then, anong result? There was the sealing. Amen. They were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, there's the preaching of the gospel. There was the hearing of the preaching of the gospel. Then the response was believing. Then you're saved. Then in Ephesians 1, 13, there was the preaching of the word of truth, the hearing of the word of truth. After that, they believe or trust. Then they were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And another thing po mga kapatid is in Romans chapter number 10, 14, there was a hierarchy, there was an order there. How shall they call on Him, so baliktad, of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on Him, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear it without a preacher? So obviously there was what? Preaching. And there was hearing. And there was what? Believing. Okay? And what's the result? There was calling. So, being saved, being sealed, and calling, they're all already the result, the fruit of believing po, mga kabadid. Bakit? Bakit po ganun po, mga kabadid? Because, in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2, let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2, Magikita po natin in that order. No, hindi mo pwedeng i-tamper yan because that's the consistency of the Word of God. Hindi mo pwedeng si calling, mag-call ka para ka maligtas. There's already, when you believe, there's already that imputation of righteousness and you are, you'll be saved po mga kapatid. And anong, anong sinasabi ko kanina? 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2 verse number 13, for this cause, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us. So, 1 Corinthians, idagdag po natin. Okay? 1 uh, Thessalonians 2.13. In, in addition po mga kapatid. So, if you read this verse, When ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, my hearing, ye receive it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. The word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So three things when you put this order of salvation is, of course, there was there. It is presumed that there is preaching. Why? Suppose that there is preaching because why? Because there was hearing going on in that verse, and there was believing also. Then the result was effectual working. There was effectual working. So, there is always, that's the outcome always of that order. Mga kapatid, salvation happens here. Salvation happened here po mga kapatid, in this part. And there was no middle ground na makikita mo. And all of these are results. Amen. The outcome of believing. And by no means na pwede mong balik na rin. So there must be the laying down of the facts. Ito po, the preaching and the hearing of the fact. And this is the response. Amen. This is the result. Kita nyo po, the fact should be preached and heard. Amen. There was a fact being preached and heard in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. There was a fact being preached. Amen. And heard in 1 Corinthians 15. And there was a fact being preached and heard in Ephesians 1.13. There was a fact of salvation being preached and heard in first in Romans 10.14. And also po mga kapatid, the response is, there is the believing in response to the fact. Believing in response to the fact. Believing or trusting in response to the fact. Believing in response and, and trusting in response to the fact. And the result of that is, Effectually working, being saved, and being sealed, and then calling upon the name of the Lord. If you look at in that order. 
So, you see po mga kabadid? So, it is clear. The fact, the response, then the result. It is actually po mga kabadid, the working of the fact and faith, then result na kagad. And all of these are the fruits. The result or the fruit. That they are not the basis. All of these are not the basis of salvation, but the basis or of salvation is the, the fact and its response to the fact, to the referent. And it should be understood that way. Kung ikaw po ay lost dito, magkaka, wala, wala tayo, magkaroon kang iba. Where is prayer there? Hello? Where is confession there? Where is repentance from sins there? Where is repeat after me there? It is zero. Why? Because the Bible did not tell us so, told us so about that. That's why hindi tayo pwedeng mag-imbento. Because facts are discovered, they're not invented. So, hindi ka pwedeng mag-invento. Now, kung mag-invento ka, apart sa order din, it is clear sa order din, I gave you four witnesses, and that is evident in many, many passages of Scripture. Amen. So, we know, you know that believing, itong believing, would never precede preaching and hearing. Believing can only be developed po mga kapatid after there was the preaching of the fact, after there was the hearing of the fact, then there is now the necessity of the response. So the fact, then the response, then the result. And that should be understood that way. Kasi ang sabi ng Bible, God can declare His righteousness. Sabi niya, I say, to declare his righteousness, for he is just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. Who is he? Who is God? The justifier of him. And where is justification happen? Take note on that. The justifier, God is the justifier of who? Of him that what? That believeth. Amen. In Jesus. So, where is justification happen? When they believe. When they believe. When they believe. Can you prove that in the Bible? That justification happened and the imputation of righteousness happened po mga kapatid as the result of these things po mga kapatid as the result of believing. There's a whole deal of scriptures about that po mga kapatid. And I just read that to you. That righteousness to everyone that believe it. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. The righteousness of God is unto all upon all them that believe. And the Bible says to save them that believe. That's why 1 Corinthians, if you add 1 Corinthians 1.21, there was preaching, there was hearing, there was believing, then there was salvation. There was saving. And it is in that order. And because Christ is, God is the justifier of him that believeth. So, justification, salvation hap happened here. And this is just the result of it. But salvation happened here. But there must be the preaching and hearing. But it should not be other way around. Hindi po pwedeng mauna ang believing, then saka po ito. The order should be the fact, then the faith, then salvation. And that's it. Amen. Amen. So, with that regard po mga kapatid, I have a few minutes. Sana ba yung aking eraser? Minsan, ay to. Let me add to this, that the result, the next one of this is number three po mga kapatid, dyan ka napapasok the fruit Okay, the fruit of salvation. Okay? So we have the fact, the faith, and the fruit. Ubusan ako ng ink, no? The fact, 
the faith and the fruit. So, by the way, saan nangyari ang kaligtasan? Dito sa dalawa, after ng faith. Ito, hindi na to kaligtasan. Prutas na lang to. Ito na yung result. Where is salvation happen? After the fact and the response. This is the fact and faith. Dito po mga kapatid. Ito yun. Okay? So, now is the fruit of salvation. Ibig sabihin, may kaligtasan na nangyari. May ongoing na nakaligtasan na nangyayari po mga kapatid. And makikita po natin that the fruit of salvation is obviously good works. So we have the fact, the faith, then the fruit. And the result of that, the fruit of salvation is good works. Obvious po mga kapatid. Makikita po natin. It is righteousness or good works. Yung fruit po mga kabotid. For example, let's look at ba, ano po natin. Let's tingnan muna natin. Ang kaligtasan may prutas. By the way, hindi ka magbase sa kaligtasan sa prutas. Okay? Ang basihan mo sa kaligtasan, the basis of salvation is not on the fruit. The basis on salvation is the fact which is precondition on faith. Then in these two area, a person can be saved. And if he's saved, then he can now bear fruit. Sometimes he can't, but sometimes he, if he yield to the Holy Spirit, then he will bear fruit. And that fruit is good works. And that fruit is virtues, the fruit of the Spirit, and all of that. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.10, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So because we are expected to bear fruit and, and to have fruits, and ang tawag ang mga fruits na ito, ito yung Colossians 1, chapter number 1, verse number 10, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, look at that fruit, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. So that's the fruit that we're talking about. Look at, look at Philippians chapter number 1 also. The Bible says in Philippians chapter number 1, in verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, so ang righteousness is prutas. You can now bear fruit. They are not saving fact, but they are the result of being saved. So, mga kapatid, dun, dun, saan ka titingin kung ang tao ay ligtas ba o hindi? Listen sa kanyang, Amen, testimony ng kaligtasan if his testimony of salvation is consistent to the fact of salvation, then you should base that. But if his testimony of salvation is otherwise than what the fact plainly stated or laid, then yun ang problema. Hindi ko pwedeng sabihin ng tao na yun, ah, he must be saved kasi mabait siya eh. He must be saved dahil tingnan mo naman yan, no? ang godly tingnan. Ay, hindi pwedeng ganun. The basis should be babalik ka sa fact kasi this is what determined salvation is. And pakinggan mo kung ano ang response niya doon sa fact na yun, kung faith ba do, towards the fact or iba ang kanyang basis ng kanyang faith. Doon natin basihan. Kasi may mga nagpapabait-bait lang dyan. Kasi kung change life ang iyong pag-uusapan, may sabi, Oh, I must be saved, sir, dahil tingnan mo ang buhay ko na bago. And sa tanungin ko, paano ka na-save? Hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin mo na ako ay na-save. Tingnan mo, I must be saved dahil mabait na ako ngayon. Dati, hindi naman ako mabait. Da dati, hindi naman ako nagsisimba. Ngayon, nagsisimba na ako ngayon. Mga kapatid, that is not an accurate source of testimony when you say you are saved. Because that's not the way you should tell your salvation. Because kung ganun lang, marami din ang iglesia ni Kristo na ganyan ang testimony. Marami din si membro si Kibuloy na ganyan ang testimony. Marami din sa mga churches na ang, ang kaligtasan ni iba na ganyan din ang testimony. You should articulate what was the fact. You should express what was, where was your faith laid. And, that, and there, I should base whether you're saved or not. And of course, the judge is not me. It should be judged according to the truth, to the referent, whether it is so in the Word of God. And people will say, Oh, don't tell me, kahit nag-sinner's prayer ako, sasabihin, kahit nag-repeat nag after prayer, 
after pray, repeat after me prayer ako kahit hindi ko naintindihan yung ebanghelyo kahit wala akong alam sa ebanghelyo sa death burial resurrection pero nung tinanggap ko ang Panginoon sa sa panalangin I must be saved tingnan mo dahil may effect sa aking buhay bumuti ang aking buhay bumait ako at ganito ganyan delikado yon I'll, I'll tell you one story because nagbabasi ka sa fruit kasi sometimes pwedeng madaya yan Now, ito po, ito po yung story po. We have a young man uh, before, when I was still pastoring po mga kapatid, lumapit siya sa akin at nagsabi siya, Pastor, may sasabihin ako sa iyo. At ang sabi niya, Pastor, I just got saved. Sabi niya sa akin, I just got saved. Then, of course, I rejoice because I learned that he got saved. At the same time, I was curious. What made him say that? Why he say he got saved? Then, why? Bakit ako na curious? Because he is an advocate, a defender. He is always speaking a fight against sinner's prayer, against whatever fake salvation. And he is that very vocal. And every time, he will correct some, Ah, mali yan, ganito yan, dapat hindi ganyan. So, nagugulat ako. Here comes, I just got saved. So, tapos, nagtanong ko, kapatid, na, na, ay sabi ko, natutuwa ako na narealize mo na save ka. Because all the while, I, I, I thought you're saved. Because, ikaw tong very active pagdating sa, pagdating sa testimony ng, about sa mga false gospel about this. Ikaw tong very, very, ano, very uh, zealous pagdating sa mga ganon. Na ikokorek mo kagad at ganito, ganyan. Pero I was I'm just curious sabi ko sa kanya paano mo nasabi na ngayon ka lang na save. And sabi niya sa akin Pastor um ganito kasi yon uh, nung nagturo ka ng 5 Fs of salvation ito yon ito yon Fs of salvation. I thought talaga from the very beginning that I'm saved. But when you thought about these things, na search ko yung sarili ko. Sabi niya, this was an admission niya. Sabi niya, na search ko yung sarili ko. Na ang pinagtitiwalaan ko talaga at sinasandalan ko at ikinoconvince ko ang sarili ko, I must be saved. Is because of the fruits. Er ang sabi niya, my confidence pastor is, I must be saved, sabi niya. Dahil naintindihan ko ang Bible. Naintindihan ko ang preaching. Naintindihan, may ginagawa akong fruit of righteousness. I love to read the Bible. I love to study the Bible. At mga positive traits, good traits ang kanyang sinabi sa akin. And sabi na, now I realize that my trust and my faith is not on what actually ha- God, Christ had done for me. What not actually Christ had done for me. But my faith was based on the fruit. Based on the The things that I have seen, it is not on the fact. And when he said that rightly before me, and I said, praise God for that, bro. Bakit? Should I argue with him? Salvation is a personal thing. And I could not dictate anybody whether they're saved or not. But my judgment is simply based on their testimony in the consistency of what the Word of God or the fact that we're talking about. And when he said that bluntly and said, the object actually of my trust and faith now is, is the results, but not on the fact. Then finally, by God's grace, I have corrected that and finally, my kampante ang loob ko, not because I understand the Bible, now I enjoy the Bible, but it's because of what my Savior has done for me. On that faith. Amen. So, point mga kapatid, should I argue with that? No way. And that's his personal testimony and I bless the Lord for that. Now, this morning, baka ikaw yan, baka ganyan ka din, baka naman, sinasabi mo, I must be saved, you convince yourself to be saved, dahil, uy, ang tagal ko na sa ministry, ang dami ko nang nawiwitness sa nakaluluwa, 
Ang dami ko nang nalilid na kaluluwa. Ang dami ko nang natulungan. Ang dami ko nang nagawa sa field. Ang dami ko nang naganito, ganyan. Ang dami ko nang na, na ganito. Tapos, tapos sabihin mo, yun ang naglilig. Ayun ang basis mo kung bakit ka save. And you could not articulate kung saan nilagay ang iyong pananampalataya. Then doon nilalagay ang iyong pananampalataya. I'm telling you po mga kapatid, regardless how sincere you are, regardless kung i- ang object ng iyong faith, ang pinapatungan ng iyong pananampalataya. You see, you see this? I- ito yung fact ba? Kumbaga, let me say this. Ito yung fact. Dito lang nakapatong lang ang faith. Oh. Nakapatong lang ang faith dito. Ang fact is the gospel of Christ. Nakapatong lang ba? Pero kung ang baliktad sa iyo, ang iyong faith nakapatong kay fruit, naku po! Kung dito yan nakapatong kay fruit, fruits are good! But they should not be the basis of salvation. And my question on that po mga kapatid is, ikaw, saan nakapatong talaga? I mean, salvation is personal. Salvation is a personal thing. Only you and God ang nakakalam dyan. Pero ikaw lang din ang nakakalam kung saan talaga nakasalalay ang iyong pananampalataya. Saan talaga nakasalalay ang iyong trust. Doon ba sa experience mo? Doon ba sa other? Because ang next nito po mga kabatid is number four is the feeling. The feeling, the fruit, the feeling. That's the next one, no? The fruit, then the feeling. Feeling. Ang iba, nakasalalay sila sa feelings that because I feel saved. I feel, ano po mga kabatid? I feel blessed. I feel assured. I must be saved. But the question is, paano ka na saved? Kung ang sagot mo, I must be this. Kasi may peace ako. Hindi na ako takot sa kamatayan. Or I, 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 I want to do good works now. I want to serve God now. I must be saved. Mga kapatid, you are deviating. The question is, paano ka na saved? So therefore, your testimony should be based on going back to the fact. Because you, your faith is being asked. It is a simple question. Where is your faith being laid to? Where is the where is the what is the foundation of your trust? What is the foundation of your hope? And where is saan yun nakapatong? Amen. Regardless how sincere you are with your feelings and regardless on how right you are with the fruits, but sorry my friend, salvation is a fact. Salvation is a truth. And it is a good news. And that is should be the object of your faith. Now, if that if you have just heard the message today, please don't continue to convince yourself that you have been saved all the way because you have done this, you have done that, you have accomplished this, you have felt this, you have felt that, and all of that. I'm sorry, mga kapatid. That's a sinking sand. And you should say, In Christ my solid Rock I stand, all other grounds are sinking sand, all other grounds are sinking sand. I hope you could sing that. I need no other arguments, I need no other plea, it is enough. That Jesus died and that He died for me. And if your testimony of salvation and the testimony of your faith is based on the fruit, based on the feelings, or based on another source rather than the fact, then you might rec- reconsider that as well, brethren. Amen. Could you say honestly with all of your heart right now that your faith is founded on what Christ had accomplished for you, what Christ had done for you, on that sacrifice and that shed blood? Or do you still linger and hold in your thought, I must be saved because nung nagpray ako sa sinner's prayer, I was sincere back then. Kahit hindi ko naman naalala kung ano yung preaching, basta I prayed sincerely. Again, you can be sincerely wrong. And I know a lot of sincere people are in hell right now because sincerity was never the basis of salvation. And you say, oh, I must be saved because 
I love the Bible. I love to read the Bible. I like to hear preaching. I love to go to church. I love to soul win. I love to do this and I love to do that. My friend, those are good things. Those are good works, but they're not the basis of salvation. Amen. There should be as a result. Because I love my Lord, we don't, we don't believe in lordship salvation. Because I know of a lot of saved person, amen, who are living in themselves. And yet, you could not deny the fact that they have trusted on what Christ had accomplished for them. And you could not base your feeling and say, oh, I must be saved because I felt assured, I felt peace, I felt this assurance in my heart and this and that. And again, tell me what is the basis of your faith. The foundation of your faith. And the last but not the least po mga kabated, the next thing na makikita mo dito is the future. You have the fact, the faith, the fruit, the feeling, and the what? The future of salvation. The future of salvation. Now, this should be in this way. Hindi po pwedeng balik na rin na si future ang mauna or si faith ang mauna. It should be in this way. Fact. Then the faith. Then salvation would happen after the response to the fact. Then you will have fruit. You will enjoy the fruit of good works. You will enjoy the fruit of righteousness. Amen. You will in, you can be zealous of every good work. You could be fr fruitful in every good work. Amen. You could have that godly virtues. You can now love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and meekness and temperance and knowledge and patience and godliness, brotherly kindness, charity, holiness, righteousness, and goodness. These are good fruits. But we are not saved because we bear fruit. But every believer should bear fruit because he is saved by trusting and resting in the perfect redemptive work of, of the Lamb of God who beareth away the sin of the world or taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. Yes, good works should follow. I've never been saved by good works, but I'm saved unto good works. Amen. Then there must be a feeling. And salvation in Christ are never subject to human experience. It is never subject to human sensation. Because salvation in Christ, they are taken by faith. Yes, I believe this with all of my heart. That once you are saved, and once you understand how you got saved, then therefore, there is a result of a joyous appreciation. It may come to you, but it will never be the source of salvation. But that joyous appreciation of what He has done for us and how He saved us will only come as a result of believing. You know what is the feeling of salvation? That joy in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. There is that peace in Philippians chapter 6, that peace of God. There was that much assurance in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1, verse number 5, and Colossians chapter number 2, verse 2. There's that much assurance in 1 Thessalonians 4, 18. You could have that comfort in Ephesians chapter number 3, verse number 12. Amen. There is that confidence and you could have that boldness. That, that, that might be, mga kapatid, the experience that you have Po, mga kapatid, but let it be po, mga kapatid, that salvation are taken by faith and that this joyous appreciation that you have and this glorious feeling that you have may come as a result of believing but not the other way around nauna muna yung feelings mo bag pa, kaya mo nasasabing ligtas ka you should go back to the testimony of your faith not the testimony of your experience are you listening? It's not the testimony of your experience. The testimony of your, of your faith. And salvation is not by feeling, but by faith. Not by behavior, but by belief. Amen. Filled, you can be filled with joy and peace. That is a good feeling. Amen. Having joy and peace, that's a good feeling. But when the believer believes God's word, po, mga kapatid, 
and walks in the ordained good works of that Ephesians chapter number 2 verse 10 and and you walk as worthy of the calling or the vocation wherewith you are called and you will have the feeling of assurance and joy but that should not be the basis the basis should be concrete the basis of your salvation should be absolute because feelings sometimes may come and go it is on and off and that is not an accurate source of your salvation because sometimes not all the time that you will have a good feeling. Sometimes you feel bad. Amen. And if your salvation is based on your feeling, then sometimes you feel saved, sometimes you don't. <laughs> but thank God it is based on faith. Amen. And the future of your salvation, you know what's the future of your salvation? Heaven. Amen. And that is a forever, never-ending future of blessings and glory. And of course, obvious yan. Kung masave ka dito, may future ka. Masave ka na dito, magkaroon ka ng fruit, magkaroon ka ng feeling, magkaroon ka ng future po, mga kapatid. And what is that? Amen. That's that's why. It's important po, mga kapatid. Kung ikaw is saved, ganito. So, simple lang po ang aking mungkahi. Simple lang. Ating diretso. Paano ka na save? Anong basihan mo? Na ik- anong basihan ng iyong pananampalataya na nasabi mo na save ka? Now, brethren, do not just admit the fact na o nga, totoo tong sinasabi ni Evangelist Roji. But try also to to examine yourself. The Bible says, Examine yourselves whether ye are in the faith. Prove your own selves. You prove. Ikaw lang ang makaprove niyan eh. Prove in your own selves how Christ is in you. Paano nanahan si Kristo? Prove in your own self. Ikaw lang. Wala nang pag-iba makapagsabi. Now, I believe you might agree sa tinuturo ko ngayon. You might, you, you are agreeable maybe sa fact na tinuturo ko ngayon, sa truths na meron natutunan tayo ngayon. But, salvation is also a personal experience, a personal faith, I mean, personal faith towards that, that what, that the fact po, mga kapatid. But ang tanong, have you truly trusted by faith on that fact? Or you might say, oh, agree ako dyan, pero hindi, babalikan mo, balikan mo yung kaligtasan mo. Paano ka nga naligtas? Ano nga ang hinahawakan mo ulit? Should I be ashamed ma'am, to admit na, o nga naman, hindi nga naman, baka nga naman mahulog tayo na yung lumang faith pa rin ang ating alam na, ah, basta, nasave ako dun. Wala maka-argue sa akin. But you can straighten it up. You might insist that, basta madami akong good work na gawa. Basta, ma- um, hindi naman ako, I feel good always, I feel safe always. Mga kapatid, huwag nating i-devate ang error, uh, ang, 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 ang issue. Balik tayo. Have you truly trusted the fact? Have you truly trusted the person of Christ and what He has done for you? For your hope of salvation. Kung hindi po mga kapatid, why don't you reckon it with God and finally admit to yourself, ngayon lang ako, Actually, nagtitiwala. Kasi, skinoconvince ko lang, Lord, ang sarili ko na ligtas ako dahil nagawa ko to, nagawa ko dyan, nagawa to, ganito. Pero ngayon ko lang talaga tunay na lubos na maisip na wala pala talaga akong ibang paglalagyan ng aking faith kundi dito lang. And I'm not ashamed, Lord, of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power. Sometimes kasi, when you say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Sometimes, we just view that verse as, I'm not ashamed to preach it. But what about this? I'm not ashamed to admit that I got saved in the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto my salvation. Amen. Sometimes, people are ashamed to admit that they just got saved now. 
The Bible, you know what the Bible says? He that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Will not be confused and you'll not be ashamed about that. Amen. So you can you can be saved now. This is meant also to to teach not only the unbelievers but those who also who profess. This is evangelistic in nature. Ang ating every Friday po mga kapatid na makita po natin. But do you have do, do you have truly is Christ really your personal savior? Are you really looking at him? Is the necessity of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ is made clear to you? Is the significance and the worth and the value of the finished work of Christ being preached to you and made clear to you? His death, His blood, His burial, His resurrection. If not, why don't you? Because faith is placing your trust. And you could not do it by mouth. But you could do it by heart, by being agreeable and being persuaded that what the truth is saying is true. This is about taking God at His word. And mga kapatid, and that, that's the message we have. And I, I presented you po mga kapatid. I made a lot of shortcuts. But just for the sake of my finish. But I have to emphasize between the importance of the two. The relationship of the two. And you should not miss that. And I hope po mga kapatid, those who are listening will also search. Amen. Examine with an honest heart. And you could glory alone and praise Him. And finally, Amen. No more doubts. Amen. No more clouds in my heart. And no more convincing. No more deception. Trying to live, pretend to be somebody, then I can finally say, Glory and praise Him. Amen. For He saved my soul. And there's no other basis, there should be no other ground. Amen. Because my faith has found our resting place. My faith finally rests in that solid foundation, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one. His wounds for me shall plead. I need no other arguments. Amen. I need no other plea. It is enough. Amen. Enough. Amen. That Jesus died and that he died for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you take this message by heart. And if you're a believer and if you, you already know 100% sure, guaranteed of heaven, just praise him. Just adore him. Worship him of that wonderful work and thank him and serve him and love him. Amen. If you just got saved right now, rejoice. You could have all that feeling in the world. Amen. Enjoy that bliss. Woo! Amen, amen. Thank you, brethren, for joining us. I enjoy our lesson this morning. Enjoy preaching the truth. Enjoy the brethren with us. We have good numbers. Bihira lang naman tong sa, bihira lang tong sa workman's treasure and unlike sa prayer breakfast because it's a strategic time. But reaching 20 plus, that's a good number already. In this time, ha, sa time ng, kasi we know it's a dead hour kasi marami pong may trabaho, but thank God, thank God for that. Man, thank you sa Zoom. Nandito mga kasama natin sa brethren, na kasama po natin, and even dito sa Facebook Live. Thank you so much, brethren. See you on Monday. See you on Monday sa Workman's Treasure. Amen. Let's pray. Glory to you, Lord, and we praise you and we thank you. For what you have showed us, what we have heard, Panginoon. Salamat, salamat, Panginoon. Sana, Lord, Ikaw mag-bless sa, mga, sa, sa word of truth na aming napakinggan. Bless it in the hearts, especially sa mga nagsisearch pa ng katotohanan. Especially, Lord, nagko-contemplate pa kung saan nila ilalagay ang kanilang pananampalataya. Talungan nyo sila, bigyan mo sila ng more light, Lord, na maintindihan nila ng malinaw. Ang kasapatan, 
ng inyong ginawa para sa kanilang kaluluwa. Tulungan niyo, Lord, na ang kanilang faith would be placed in the right place, Panginoon. And uh, thank you for this morning and bless the, those words and those truths. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone. And God bless us all, lalo nandito sa mga kapatiran sa Zoom and sa Facebook. Have a good day ahead, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Host. Amen.